guys, the video you're about to watch will definitely bless you. Please watch this video to the end. Please click on the subscribe button. Please share our videos and please turn on your notification bell so when we post new videos, you definitely get our last for them. Thank you and enjoy your video. Very quickly, how God answers prayers. How God answers prayers. We need to know how prayers manifest. The Bible assures us according to Mark 11 and verse 24 that whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, we should believe we will receive it and the Bible assures us that we will have it. In Matthew 7, 7 and 8, the Bible says, Ask and ye shall receive, verse 8 says, For everyone that asketh, receive it. So if the Bible has this kind of assurance, it then means when we pray, we have an assurance. What I wanted to teach us, unfortunately, uh, was how to pray a fervent and effectual prayer. How to pray with passion and how to pray word compliant prayer. How to pray according to the will of God. A very important point, but we'll have to jump it for now. We'll look at it another time. But refer to my message, effective prayer dynamics effective prayer dynamics effective prayer dynamics there i teach on the subject that i just skipped now effective prayer dynamics you can get that on koinonia global god bless you so how does god answer prayers the bible says unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come there are essentially three ways please listen answers to prayer manifest using three platforms there are three platforms essentially for the manifestations of answered prayer so i know by faith that god has answered my prayer the prayer for anything whatsoever but how do i receive it physically this is what i want to teach you now number one the first platform for answered prayers is called supernatural manifestations supernatural manifestations that means God gives you peace, God gives you joy, God gives you healing, God gives you deliverance. These are all supernatural manifestations. When you pray, the answers come directly, supernaturally, as peace to your troubled heart, as joy, as healing. Say for instance, if you or anyone who is anointed prays, and let's say you have pain, the pain can leave immediately. You know the prayer has been answered because the manifestation has come supernaturally though. Daniel chapter 3, when you read from verse 24 to 30, the Bible tells us about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the burning furnace of fire. And the Bible tells us that their deliverance was instant. We saw the manifestation of God's hand. They had made bold declarations. They declared to the king that God was going to save them and that even if he did not save them, they would not bow to his image. And the Bible says they threw them there. And when they threw them, there were answers to the prayer immediately. It was supernatural. They saw the fourth man who was there. And the Bible says that their bands were loose and they were walking freely in the midst of the fire. The appearance of the fourth being like the son of God. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says that there were men who the fire had no power over. So you can receive supernatural manifestations. This is common in the area of healing, common in the area of deliverance, common in the area of trouble within your spirit. You cannot hold peace. You cannot hold joy. You cannot hold healing. You cannot hold deliverance. Yet their effect can be very real. You are suffering from cancer. God heals you. The results show immediately. You go to the hospital and they will tell you, like the person who shared the testimony of the enlarged heart, you see that a miracle happens and you see that your heart returns to normal. The madman in Gadara. A miracle happened and he returned immediately to his sound mind. The man at Gate Beautiful. So God answers prayers. Prayers manifest as supernatural manifestations. I'm praying for someone already. In the name of Jesus, every supernatural manifestation, whether healing, whether deliverance, whether peace to your troubled heart, whether a restoration of your joy, I'm praying now in the name of Jesus that you have it in this place. You receive it here and now. Shout a believing amen. Why am I teaching you this? So that when you pray, based on whatever need, you know how the answers are. Are we together? 
if you are praying for healing expect a supernatural manifestation that's how the healing comes that's how the healing comes now there are times that God can use doctors he can use medicine but I'm talking about the three ways so number one supernatural manifestations supernatural manifestations number two the second way that God answers prayer is by releasing the graces listen carefully releasing the graces that attract the physical results releasing the graces that attract the physical results God answers prayers by releasing graces spiritual resources that attract the physical results graces like wisdom graces like favor graces like direction graces like understanding give us first Kings chapter 3 please from verse 5 God answers prayers by releasing graces that means when you go to the place of prayer as you are praying and asking God for things take note that the answer can come as a release of graces do you know some of you when you shout and fall in koinonia while I teach it's not always deliverance this is it many times what is actually happening to you is an impartation you are receiving a grace bespoke to that situation you are trusting God for it can come as wisdom it can come as favor and impartation these graces have referred to my teaching true riches I told you that physical things are products they are drawn by the spiritual resources we have are we together most believers pray and they don't know the answer to their prayer for instance you are saying oh God bring me promotion in the name of Jesus but there is a level of mental capacity you need in order to be promoted so God answers that prayer by releasing that grace a higher level of wisdom a higher level of insight you find out that you understand your job in a way that is is a lot more efficient and very soon your superiors can see that there's been improvement it's called an excellent spirit it's a grace Daniel had that that was how Daniel was elevated that an excellent spirit was upon him for someone whilst you are hearing me now there's prayer that you've been praying from January God answered the prayer but because you've not been taught how answers manifest you've been looking physical you've been looking around yet the grace has come upon you what do you do with the graces number one you acknowledge them Philemon 1 verse 6 that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus you acknowledge the grace that that grace has come upon me then you engage the grace by faith engage the grace by faith there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty make it man of understanding but what do you do with the understanding you have to engage he shall be of quick understanding Isaiah 11 and verse 3 he shall be of quick understanding of quick understanding of quick understanding God answers prayer by releasing the various graces that are responsible for the command of the physical testimonies we desire. Please look at me. When you pray and say, Father, give me money, there are many ways he can answer that prayer. But the most classical way of answering that prayer is to give you the spiritual resources, the power to prosper, wisdom, favor, like you have learned. Refer to my message, Seasons of Abundance. My most recent message on finances there are a lot others the power to get wealth and so on and so forth now when god releases that grace upon you what happens is as you engage it that grace begins to attract people circumstances and opportunities that are consistent with your desire are we together now yes you find out that your problem solving abilities are heightened by the spirit God leads you to learn certain solutions that you bring to men's problems and soon increase comes to you but it first came as an increase in grace the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied when grace is multiplied results are also multiplied may grace be multiplied for someone amen. shout amen like you're interested so first Kings chapter 3 please from verse 5 let's hurry up first Kings 3 from verse 5 the Bible says that Solomon had an encounter with God it says in Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night are we still here and the Bible says God told him ask I want to give you but he gave him nothing physical when you read the full text is to 13 
to 13. Go to verse 9 for sake of time. So he gave, Solomon asked for an understanding heart to judge the people. That was what he asked for. Are you seeing that? He didn't ask for people. He asked for understanding heart that he would discern judgment. Verse 10, the Bible says God was pleased. And verse 11, he now says that since you did not ask for long life or for riches or for the life of your enemies, but you ask for understanding. Hear what God gave him, 12 and 13. He says, I have done according to thy words. I have given thee. This transaction was happening in a dream. He didn't wake up with any physical thing, yet his prayer was answered. I have given thee an understanding heart, so that there is none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise unto thee. Read 13, interesting scripture. I have also given thee both riches and honor. These are graces. God did not bring money. He didn't wake up and see gold or whatever, ivory or whatever as they used those days. He gave him riches as a grace. He gave him honor as a grace. And when the man got up in no time, kings began to come from various nations because his wisdom was so compelling. And they brought him gold. They brought him ivory. Even the queen of Sheba, she was the last. It was recorded of the royalties to come. She came bearing gifts. So when you pray and say, Father, increase me, change my story. It's important to know how God answers. The very common way of God answering, if it's not something that requires a supernatural manifestation like healing, most physical results, physical testimonies are answered by God releasing the graces that attract them. The graces that attract them. There is a grace that can attract the resources you are praying for. There is a grace that can attract the finances. There is a grace that can attract whatever it is. Looking for it is a waste of time. You receive the grace and it draws it to you. Say amen. amen. The final way God answers prayer is through the ministry of men. The ministry of men. The ministry of men. 1 Samuel 10, 26-27. 1 Samuel 10, 26, 27. Someone's prayer life is becoming richer because you are learning now how God answers prayer. And Saul went home to Gibeah and there went with him. I like this. When I was studying, preparing for this, my God, this scripture, I've seen it before, but it came with light. It blew my spirit. Watch this. And there went with him a band of men. Read the last sentence. Whose hearts God had touched. Whose hearts God had touched. 27. But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? These were the ones whose hearts were not touched. And they despised him and brought him no presence. Give us amplified, please. Same scripture. Amplified. Same scripture. Go to 26 again. Saul went home to Gibeah. And the Bible says, they went with him a band of valiant men whose hearts God had touched. Nobody follows you until God touches their hearts. Nobody helps you. When you see a man coming to assist you, the Bible says this is a mystery that God had touched in their hearts. I think his promise, who says it when he's taking the offering? He says, may God put your name in the hearts of men. This is what he tries to say. Verse 27. The Bible said, but some worthless fellows said, how can this man save us? This is what you get when God does not touch the heart of men and they come around you. They will despise you. He says, how can this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no gift. But he held his peace as if he was deaf. Men whose heart God has touched. Father, I'm praying that you bring me out of this calamity. You know how God answers you? When he grants you those graces, you would touch the heart of someone. Oh, happy is the man who meets a man whose heart God has touched. They will do things as if they are under the influence of a charm. Where is your mother? Where is your father? Tell them I will start helping you every day. I will be sending one, one million till December. It is my contribution to this family, no strings attached. And you are even afraid. There are men whose heart God has touched. God can touch the heart of royalties. God can touch the heart of men of influence. Do you believe this? Men whose heart God has touched. Every man of God needs to pray this prayer. Nobody has members. 
you only have those whose heart God has touched nobody follows you just because somebody is with you for many years does not mean they are with you men whose heart God has touched this year is the secret of loyalty is the secret of commitment is the secret of genuine connection whether for ministry whether for business if you are a leader here here's your prayer point for this week go and pray father touch the heart of men for my sake I have taught you Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. These are the names of the people who shall stand with you. Who shall stand with you. Who shall stand with you. Not everybody stands with you. The Jesus you love so much, there are people who despise him because their hearts have not been touched. It is amazing how you can be a champion to someone and you can be bilial to another person depending on whose heart God has touched. So don't be surprised when people despise you while others are celebrating you. I think it's something preachers are having a hard time to understand. How could somebody celebrate you, honor you, love you, serve that grace, and then another person despises you so harshly, unfortunately. It is not every man whose heart has been touched for you. It is your assignment as a man of God to say, Lord, all that you have given me, touch their heart. Don't make a mistake of thinking that as congregants sit down and look at you as a man of God, they are truly connected. If God does not touch their heart, they can be with you for 10 years and one day they will say crucify him and go to bed while you are on the cross. Did you hear what I said? Pray for everybody in your house, oh, house help, security people, whatever. God touch their heart. If not, the day somebody comes to say, look, oh, can you help me and kill this man? Ask Judas. Judas was with Jesus, but his heart was not touched. You need to pray. Leaders, pray for everybody within your circle. Those who play pivotal role. God, touch them. Touch their hearts. Let them be loyal indeed. Committed indeed. Spouses, pray for yourselves one for another. So that there's no falsehood and deception. Pray for yourself. Give us that scripture again. Saul also went home to Gibeah and there went with him a band of valiant men. Men whose hearts God has touched. Your destiny helper comes under this category. Are we together? Have you read a very interesting story in the Bible? We're about to pray. That story is found, I think in Luke chapter, is it Luke chapter 10? From verse 29 to 36 just write it for reference Luke chapter 10 is the story of a man called the Samaritan have you heard the story of the good Samaritan so I will quote it quickly for time the Bible tells us that there was this man read verse 30 Jesus now is explaining that there was a certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho he fell among thieves please look up and they stripped him of his garment they wounded him and they departed leaving him half dead everybody say half dead and there were three people who were who came to the life of that man the most likely people did not help him number one was a priest the priest came when you read the verses a priest came and saw him and went away as if he did not see anything number two a levite came people of consecration came and saw him and passed on but then number three a man whose heart god had touched the bible said a certain samaritan when he saw him he had compassion upon him and what did he do in response to the compassion 34 he bound his wounds he poured oil he poured wine he set him on his own donkey he brought him to a hotel and took care of him and he went further verse 35 to leave an instruction he said he took two pens and gave the hotel host and said take care of him and whatever else you spend i will come back and repay you man whose heart god has touched they will pay your rent last year and come this year again and say are you stable now you say not yet sir and say don't worry i will still pay it men whose heart god has touched who needs those kind of people men whose heart i'm about to pray that prayer for you 
men whose hearts i've seen a few of these kinds of people in my life and in all fairness most of you if not all of you are here because this happened to you you need these kinds of people in your life else as a man of god you will walk alone as a leader you will walk alone as a businessman you will walk alone or you will be surrounded by psychophants to a point where you will live in fear everybody is answering yes sir but the truth is that their hearts have not been touched they will sell you for 30 shekels they will sell you for anything at all judas even the brothers of joseph they were not touched even though they were his brothers when an opportunity came they sold him cheaply it takes beyond proximity for connection to happen god must touch the heart of a man maybe we should start with that prayer we'll start with this prayer and then connect to others whilst you are seated lord touch the heart of my helpers in this season touch the heart of anyone and everyone who is part of your prophetic program for me whilst you are seated make sure you pray outside pray businessmen pray maybe this is the miracle you came to church to receive lord touch the heart of someone where is the good samaritan who must show me kindness where is the good samaritan who will make prophecy happen in my life where is that helper in ministry that helper in business mama pray for your children where is the helper that god has positioned to lift my children some of them are in a foreign land void of help lord send to my life send to my family send to my ministry sent to my home sent to my job sent to my destiny the man whose heart God has touched someone take a minute to pray you are investing in your destiny this is the school of prayer God answers prayer by sending men God answers prayers by releasing graces supernatural endowments that command physical results physical testimonies God answers prayers by granting you access to supernatural experiences. Someone pray. The final arrival of all answer to prayers is the arrival of men. They come with the gifts they carry. They come with glad tidings. They come with physical things. They come with goodness. They come with mercy. Men are an expression of God's goodness. Men are an expression of God's mercy. Men are an expression of God's prosperity. Your wealth is in the hands of men. Your favor is in the hands of men. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. The land you will build on is currently in the hand of some man. God needs to help you. If God does not touch the heart of men, you will live a defeated life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. In this season, oh God, I receive answers to prayer. If it's a healing, cry for a supernatural manifestation. Let that cancer die. Let that deliverance be perfected. Let this recurrent ill health give way once and for all. Let this blood condition go. It is within your power to heal me and to heal me now. Heal me, O oh God, and I will be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. Now go ahead and pray. The resources of wisdom, the resources of favor, the resources of direction, the resources of power, the resources of the anointing, the resources of honor, let it rest upon me drawing to my life physical testimonies testimonies of abundance and increase believers are praying two or three more minutes go ahead and pray oh, my help has come oh has come oh, oh, oh my lifting has come oh, 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 oh my help has come oh, oh, oh
Paratusiata. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. In the name of Jesus, listen to me. It is impossible to have your prayer life go down when you understand these things. That this is the treasure that is hidden in a life of prayer. That every time I commit to prayer, I give God an opportunity to reveal His glory through my life. Imagine the things we miss when we do not pray. And imagine the things we miss when we pray without understanding. Imagine the things we miss when we pray are miss. That prayer is me and God's purposes through you to be actualized. He made it so. He gave you that gift and that gift had placed a mandate upon your life that you must always communicate your needs. Communicate your needs. No assumption. No presumption. And I've taught you tonight that there are various assignments to prayer your growth and transformation obtaining requests in the place of prayer making decrees establishing spiritual realities i also taught you that the final assignment of prayer is for warfare and intercession i've taught you various prayer models make sure you take advantage of them that you can pray in the spirit Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Consistently growing. Molting yourself to a more powerful version. Are we together now? That you can pray declaring faith-filled declaration of scriptures. You can pray the prayer of inquiry. You can pray warfare. Warfare prayer. And you can pray with thanksgiving as the tool for receiving. Now I've taught you finally... That when God answers prayers, these are the three channels for its manifestation. Number one, God answers prayers by giving you supernatural manifestations. Like a healing miracle, like a deliverance. Are we together? Supernatural. It is instant and yet even though it's from the spirit, you can have a physical expression. And then that God releases graces in answer to prayer. Graces of wisdom. Graces of favor graces of power, graces of understanding, graces of direction, graces of honor. When you carry these graces, the graces have a mandate to draw forth physical circumstances, physical experiences that translate to your testimony. And that the final arrival of every answered prayer is through the ministry of men. They come in response to what you are carrying on your head. They come in response to something God has placed upon your life. And that for that to happen, God must touch their heart. Men can be aware of your need, but it does not mean they will respond to it. These are the men whose heart God has touched. Who has learned tonight? Go back and listen to this message. Go back and meditate upon this. Meditate upon this until your prayer life becomes richer and becomes fuller. I'll ask you to pray one prayer and then I speak over your life. Father everything that has killed my prayer life i command it out of my destiny fan my prayer life back to life i need to be a believer with power a believer with results i intend to gain mastery in the place of prayer someone pray someone pray take a minute to pray prayer that translates to your prosperity to your advancement to your empowerment consistent unending results by the spirit you are taking a minute to pray. Fan back the ambers of prayer. Fan back your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we pray. Let me speak over you now. In the name that is above all names. I pray for someone. The encounters you lost as a result of the decline of your prayer life. May it resume tonight. Thank you.
the supernatural encounters that brought you direction that made your future predictable you knew things before they happened you walked with certainty and accuracy but you